We are rolling. Welcome everybody. I'm Tim with Golf Car Garage. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. Let me make sure everything is working here. I've had some internet difficulty lately. Just check, make sure we're rolling good. Looks like we're doing all right. All right, got people showing up. I'm gonna get a longer timer to try to help uh, get some more people in the room before we get started because a lot of people seem to come in late sometimes. Good morning, Tim from DMAX97. Good morning to you, sir. Rock Dog, what's up, man? Nate Medlin, got a question. 1990 Easy Go Marathon electric and what weight and differential oils are it? 30 weight motor oil or 80 90 gear oil, preferably full synthetic? Yeah, I, I put what I have found is that you know that's a that rear end is exactly like a car, but it's considered a low speed rear end, so it's not really as important as putting the exact oil in there as it is making sure that it has oil in there. Like, so in other words, either one of those would be fine 80 90 gear oil, anything at Walmart that says gear oil on the on the uh, thing would be fine uh, on the container would be fine as far as i'm concerned because we're not talking about a high speed rear end here but yeah 80 90 uh, weight gear oil would be fine full synthetic yeah that'd be fine too randy rizzo what's going on man morning rock dog <laughs> hey gene anson on facebook and he's wearing his hat he's got his golf cart garage hat on that he won <laughs> I can see it in his avatar. He's got his avatar with him wearing his hat. Bob Wilson. Hey, Tim. What's up, Bob Wilson? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> That's cool, Gene. Okay. This is Thursday, the 3rd of August, and I cannot believe that it's already August, and I also can't believe how hot it is. It is hot. Uh, I can see the temperature in the bottom left of my screen for my area. I'm looking at today, I'm looking at 96 and sunny. And I had to mow the other day, so you can imagine that was, a, that was pretty hot. This is episode 140, today's episode. Here are some other social media links that you can uh, follow us on. TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, everywhere that everywhere else we are besides Facebook and YouTube. If you like this content on Facebook and YouTube, please like and subscribe. Please comment at all. It helps everything. But if you'd like to follow us on one of the other ones, you can also. Okay, so we got all that done. We will get started with the regular questions. Nate Medlin, the rear axle on the marathon Dana Spicer. Yeah, that's what Easy Go uses. Yep. We'll get started with these regular questions. Since the garage is now open. Oh, by the way, uh, sometimes I, I forget to, to say what I do at Golf Cart Garage. Uh, I do work for Golf Cart Garage, but I am a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer. That's G-H-O-D. And if you'll go to GolfCartGarage.com or click in the link in the description, it will take you. If you go to GolfCartGarage.com, you can scroll down. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page, and there's a place at the bottom that says Gearheads On Demand. You can click there and take you to the scheduling page, or you can click a link in this description on this video, and you can that will take you to the scheduling page. This is a service that we offer where I... Well, you can schedule a slot, a time slot for me to call you, and I will call you and we'll discuss your golf cart issue. I may have seen it before, I may be able to help you. So that's what that's all about. I want to make sure that I, I mention that since I don't have that, I don't have that banner in here like I used to. I just have Golf Cart Garage. I used to have that GHOD banner behind me. I may have to move that in here. Uh, Dave is posting it right now. He's posting the link for GHOD for the scheduling page. So it is in the uh, it is in the comments now. Thank you, Dave. Okay, question number one, uh, Dave. If you don't mind, post the phone number too. I'll get I'll get Iman to give me a graphic of the phone number for Golf Cart Garage in case somebody wants to call and speak with one of our amazing customer service representatives or our amazing team members that we have here at Golf Cart Garage. We have several of them that work here. Besides myself, I know, um, of course. 
Number one, what exactly does the Altrax do? Hmm. Well, the Altrax is a controller. It's a golf cart controller, but it is a more heavy duty controller than the stock one that you have in your golf cart. That'd be the basic way to describe it. It's a more heavy duty controller. It's actually waterproof. Uh, and it's going to, it has, you have several options to choose from in amperage availability. So it gives you an, an even programmable availability. Uh, so it gives you more things, more uh, settings that you can change and manipulate in your golf cart. Plus it's a heavier duty unit. A lot of times the unit that's in a golf cart is only designed for the golf cart in stock form. Like if, with, the, with the stock tires, golf course, turf, you know, golf courses are manicured with golf cart pass and everything. So you don't have to be real heavy duty in order to, to, to utilize that environment, you know, to, to, to be successful in that environment as a golf cart. But when you start trying to go off road, you start trying to put four passenger kits with four people on there. Sometimes you need to upgrade things. Now the controller would be one of them. Number two. What can I do or get that will muffle the engine noise on my 2014 Yamaha car? Uh, on a 2014 gas Yamaha car, the exhaust, it, it comes out under the seat. Now, I wouldn't do too much because the, what the deal is, is that the length of that exhaust and the shape of it is designed and for the tune of the motor. It, so if you change it too much, you're going, to, you're going to change the tune. And you don't want to change the tune in your engine because that was set by the factory. That's the factory tune if you're running the factory exhaust. Now I've had some people complain before that the exhaust, because of, of the uh, going slow on the golf course or whatever, that the exhaust fumes can come up inside the golf cart. And so they wanted to do something and they've actually put an extension on the end of that pipe. You could just weld an extension to where the, it would make the end of that pipe go out the side of the cart rather than under it. Uh, that may help you, but don't go too far because if you, if you, if you change that length, like I said, you're going to change. Don't try to run it all the way out the back because that may change the tune too much. So you could experiment by adding a short piece just to see if you can divert it to somewhere else. And it, that also may change the sound. It may make it sound a little bit uh, quieter. But I wouldn't change it too much, like I said. Bruce, what's up, Bruce? Thank you for showing up. Let's see. Bob Wilson says, all good in Georgia. This is on Facebook. Easy go brakes, not gripping. New brakes, new drums, new cables. Think I need to pull hubs off and scuff up pads. All non-OEM products, Amazon replacement parts. 2004 TXT4 Caddy. Well, Bob, there is, there is some tricks to doing a brake job uh, on an Easy Go TXT. There's some things that you need to understand, you know, that, that just have to be done. I don't know if you noticed or not, but you know that hole in the side of the, of the brake hub? You, if you did everything, you got new drums, new cables, and uh, well, a lot of times you need to take a screwdriver and manipulate that star wheel after you've got that hub on there and you go through that hole and manipulate that star wheel and get your brakes to come out to a certain point before they will start self-adjusting. Like if you just put everything on and you get on your, your cart and you try to start self-adjusting by pumping your brake pedal, sometimes it won't catch. So you've got, to, you've got to adjust that star wheel a little more and you'll hear it when you start hitting the star wheel. You'll hear it clicking in the back. That's when you know you got it right and your brake pedal will tighten up and everything will start gripping. But yes, I always scuff the pads also. I always scuff the pads up, just like you were talking about. Tell me chat move to where? Tell me keeps telling me chat move to where? I don't know, Kurt. We're not having, I'm not showing that we're having any problems today. I'm looking at Facebook. I'm looking at YouTube. Everything seems to be good. Scuff the pads with what? Sandpaper, something rough, uh, a, a rough, uh, uh, a rough grade sandpaper. 
Yes, 60 would be considered rough in my book, yes. I've never found that that helped a lot, but I always do that if I, just to eliminate that as being an issue, I always do that, but never found that to be the problem. Usually it's just a star wheel adjustment to get, to get the brakes out far enough before they'll start self-adjusting. Number three. 98 Easy Go TXT. My car moves on flat ground, but going up a hill, it shudders and struggles to move. The batteries all read out at six volts. Any idea what could be wrong? Thank you. I'm sure you all know what I'm going to say. Uh, I, I, wanna, I would say, tell me what your batteries read out during the shutter. That's what I would want to know. Make it shutter and take a reading on your batteries while it's going on. Whatever you got to do. If you've got to connect your voltmeter to your battery and bring it up in your seat with you in order to do that, then do that. Make it shutter and watch your volts and see if they still read out six volts. I bet you'll find that at least one of them does not. Uh, surface voltage could be six, but under load it could be, it could plummet. Number four. 2001 club car has new generator starter and has intermittent pedal engaging problems. Once it starts, it runs good. Okay, your gas club car, intermittent pedal engaging could be a couple of things that I'd want to eliminate right off the bat. Uh, most likely, you know, your, sil your solenoid is, is intermittent, so it could, it's going to either be your micro switch that's on your accelerator pedal, you know, follow your accelerator pedal linkage, and it's going to lead to an area on a club car, it's a box, like a triangular box, uh, depending, yeah, 2001, it's going to be a triangular box, it's, it's got one bolt in the top of it, you take that off and there's some micro switches in there, all right, well, that, those micro switches are in that circuit to make that solenoid click. So you got a, you got micro switches there that could be intermittent, and then you also have some micro switches on the back side of your forward and reverse lever on the gas cart that could be causing you some issue too. So you're going to check all your micro switches on the back side of your forward and reverse and in that triangular box for continuity. Make sure that they are actually turning on and off. Number five, why is my 91 DS club car getting so hot that it melts the V wiper assembly? We just put a new V wiper assembly and new wires. It's getting hot enough that it melts the V wiper assembly. I don't want to burn up my new one. Can you possibly give advice? My first advice would be a question and it would be, where are you getting your V wiper assemblies from? Uh, because I, I just had a call this past week with a man, uh, it was a scheduled call, and his cart wasn't moving, and he and I said, well, have you, what about your forward and reverse assembly, you know, because you got to understand that V wiper assembly is nothing but copper contacts on copper contacts. Well, so is your forward and reverse assembly when it's a series wound cart. It's copper contacts on copper contacts. His car wouldn't move, and I said, I kept saying, well, what about your forward and reverse assembly? Is it, he said, I, he said, I replaced it uh, within a year. Well, he replaced it with one that was really inexpensive, you know, from Amazon or eBay somewhere. And uh, I kept harping back to that, and he kept saying that it, it, what, he didn't think that was going to be it since it was less than a year old. Well, so I told him to do this. I told him to put pressure on it when it's in forward, put a little pressure in forward in different directions and hold pressure and see if that changes anything. And sure enough, the cart started moving when, just because he was adding pressure in different directions. So what does that say? That says that those copper contacts are loose. They're not, they're not good and solid in that forward and reverse mechanism. The same thing can happen with a cheap uh, wiper assembly. It could not be sitting right in there on the copper contacts. You've got to have clean copper on clean copper to get good contacts, or you're going to build up heat. And heat is always caused by some type of loose connection. So 
from what you're describing, that's what it sounds like to me. You've got a loose connection or your, your wiper assembly is not adjusted correctly, one or the other. You might ought to try a, uh, if you have to, see if you can get a OEM one. I don't know if you can for a cart that old, but it would be, that's what I would advise. Gary England on YouTube. How's it going, Gary? Looking to upgrade my 91 DS to a more modern system. What would you recommend as far as cost savings? Well, most people that do anything to a 91 DS are just going to, they're just going to change it to an IQ system. That's what's probably the easiest to do because IQ wiring harnesses are readily available. So you could, you would just yank everything, you know, you're going to yank everything out of there basically. And, put an IQ wiring harness in there, which is going to include a push button forward and reverse switch. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get the M core conversion kit. You're going to have to go from pre M core to M core. And there's a conversion kit to do that, but it all will plug into the IQ wiring harness. Then you're going to go with an IQ motor and an IQ controller because a 91 DS, the frame is going to be the same as a, as a more modern DS with an IQ system. Most people that change anything on a car that old, that's what they would be trying to do. Butch, how's it going, man? 98 TXT gas. I have problems sometimes changing directions. If you're in forward and you go to reverse, it still goes forward and vice versa and reverse to forward. I've, I've talked about this before, Butch. Uh, one of the things, that, uh, really the only thing that can get out of adjustment is the, is the shift cable, you know, on gas cars. So a lot of times what I like to do is I like to disconnect the shift cable from the transaxle. If you'll follow your shifter cable, you'll see that it goes all the way to the back of the car and on top of the transaxle it's connected to an arm. Well, I like to disconnect it from that arm and then manually put that lever in forward on top of the transaxle and then put it in reverse, put it and then manually put it in reverse and drive the cart and see if you have any problems. See if you ever have any of those problems that you're, that you're describing. Uh, see if it ever jumps out of gear, see if it, do if it doesn't, if you don't have any problems and you know it's something to do with the misadjusted uh, shifter cable. Bob Wilson says, thanks, I'll do a do-over on, uh, on the brake adjustment. That's, that's probably what it is, Bob. You just need to adjust your brakes. Catherine says, we're good on Facebook. I think you're right about lack of self-adjusting. See, what I can, I can tell you this, Bob, once you get it to the point where they, where they do start self-adjusting with you pumping the pedal, you'll hear it clicking in the rear and you, with every click, you'll feel the pedal get, get tighter and tighter and tighter and not go down. That's when you know you got it, is when, is when you feel that. Ricky Smith, what's up, Ricky Smith? Reggie Watson, Candy America Tech made it. Hey Tim, what's up, Reggie? Did you did I did you did I talk to you about when I featured your car? Oh, that's right. I think you told me you were stuck on the phone or something. So you you, you saw it, but you couldn't say anything because you were stuck on the phone. Is that right, Reggie? What's the cheapest speed up? got some icons in the way there. I can't even see the last word. Cheapest speed up for a 98 speed upgrade. Oh, speed upgrade. I got you. For a 98 six passenger villager. So that's a that's a club car villager. Is it a, we talking about electric or gas uh, D-Max? Okay, Reggie, I just want to make sure you saw it uh, that when we featured your car, but yeah, I thought I remembered you telling me you were on the phone. Oh, you got you a hat, huh? Okay, cool. So you went ahead and bought one, Reggie? You couldn't wait to try to win? <laughs> electric. Cheapest upgrade on speed for 98 six-passenger Villager Electric. Okay, so is does it have a run tow switch D-Max on your, on your 98? I would say it. It could, or it could not. It could be either one. Because I'd have a different answer. 
Okay, it does not. So that means it's a series cart. All right. Well, on a series cart, the, the best thing to do, there's no cheap upgrade, actually. The best thing to do would be motor, controller, and solenoid to do it all at once. And if you can't do it all at once, which a lot of people can't, then do controller first. Get you a big controller to put in there, big heavy amp series controller. And then later on, put you a motor and a solenoid in there if you can't do it all at once. But it'd be motor, controller, solenoid. After that point, if you're still not fast enough, then you can put high speed gears in the rear end. But you don't want to put high speed gears on a stock system because that's going to put too much of a strain on it. That's cool, Reggie. Thank you for ordering a hat, man. Irina Roy, thumbs up on Facebook. Thank you, Irina. Thank you for stopping by. Number, number six is where we're at on the regular questions. I have a 22, 2022 48 volt lithium manufactured by a small company called Volt here in Georgia. The cart doesn't slow after removing foot from the pedal like it used to. We'd like to understand the issue before having to take it in for service. Well, on modern, modern day carts, you know, they have uh, regenerative braking. Uh, now, on Volt, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they got going on. There's not too many people that are going to know anything about those except for the dealer, you know, th th where you got them from. But it sounds like if it used to do it, if it used to slow down and now it doesn't, sounds like for some reason you've lost your region. It would be what, it, what they would be looking for. Now, it being a 2022 and a lithium car, very likely that it's programmable. Very likely, even though it's not a club car Yamaha or a, or a easy go. So they could probably plug into it and check and see what's going on with your region. See if, see if it's lost its programming or, or if something is actually going on. So that's what I would do. I'd, I'd call them and ask them about that. Sit, ask them if it's programmable. Let's see. Wiz and PA. What's up, man? 94 Yamaha G9 not blowing so much smoke anymore after you said keep running it after overfill of oil. Checked oil level is okay. Still smokes after running 10 minutes or so. Okay, so are you the one that had the lifted G9? And I, and I recommended taking a little bit of oil out. Uh, if it is, I, I, you gotta understand, you're not the only person I've had that conversation with, if, that, if that's true. I've had that conversation with lots of people with gas carts that put a lift kit on it and, uh, and then complained about it smoking because of the motor angle. I don't know if anybody's in here that remembers that. Randy, really, you should do tutorials on something. We, we actually have, we actually have something like that in the works, Randy. We, we're discussing it, trying to figure out the details on on how we would do that. But yeah, that's that's probably coming, uh, especially since I moved from my office to out here in the shop. I mean, I, I could I could really do it out here, and it would it would be good. Wiz ordered a new air filter. Hank Yost, 93 Club Car DS Gas. Replaced the carburetor, adjusted the throttle, even tampered with the governor. It continues to randomly backfire, going slowing down to take a turn, reapplying throttle backfire. Okay, have I talked to you about this before, Hank? Because uh, if, it's, if it's backfiring when you reapply, reapply throttle, okay, like, like you just said, that's why I'm asking, have I talked to you? Because it's, uh, it sounds familiar, but I have had that conversation before too. When you let off the throttle, the butterfly valve closes, all right, to, so no more gas is getting through. The needle and seat closes, so no more gas is supposed to be getting through. Therefore, when you put your foot back on the accelerator pedal and your engine sparks again, there's only fuel that comes in that it needs to have. If it's backfiring when you, when you do that, then you have some gas leaking into the cylinder some, for some reason, 
could be the butterfly valve is not closed in all the way or the more likely candidate is the needle and seat is not closing all the way so when you've got your foot off of the accelerator pedal fuel some fuel is still going past the carburetor and dripping into the cylinder and then when you put your foot back on boom it ignites that fuel the cart starts sparking again and ignites that fuel that would be what i would uh guess on what was be going on there because i have seen that before When refilling, uh, this is from Kurt, when refilling the batteries, is it best to do before or after charging? That's a good question, Kurt. It is best to do, believe it or not, only do that after charging, okay? And I, and I know I've talked about this. Uh, I don't know how many times, I've, or it might've been a long time ago. I, I have the, you gotta understand, the conversations I have on here, on the air, I have on the phone almost every day too. So I, sometimes I get confused on where I had this conversation before, but I know I have. Well, during the charge cycle, when a, when a golf cart charges, the level of water rises, not a lot. I mean, it's not like that much. So the level of water does rise in the battery a little bit. So let's just say if one day you were out and you said, I need to do some maintenance on my cart. I haven't done anything in a while. I think I'll put some water in it. And then you go over there and you just top it off like they do at the golf course, by the way. They just top them off. All right, then you said, I'll go charge it. Well, you just put water in and the car wasn't fully charged. Then you went over there and you put it on the charger. Guess what? Water level is going to rise. It's got nowhere to go. It's got no space. It's got no room for expansion. So it's going to come out the top. Then it's going to go to the first metal, which is your, your uh, cables connected to your lead post. Uh, it's going to drip down the sides of the batteries. It's going to drip on your concrete floor and it's going to ruin your concrete floor. So make sure your cart is fully charged first. Therefore, you know that the battery water level is as high as it's going to get at that point. Therefore, when, you, when it's, uh, it's fully charged, it's, it's, it's as far as it's going to be up top. And then when you discharge this, when you drive the cart, the water level drops a little bit. Now, we're not talking about a, a big gain and a big loss here. We're talking about just very little bit. So the answer to your question is make sure it's charged first. Unless you've got one that's dry. If you've got one that's dry, then just make sure it's over the lead plate. Okay. Number seven is where we're at. I have a club car. We'll go backwards. Hear a click after pressing the gas pedal, but will not go forward. Okay, so I would ask, first I would ask, run toe switch or not? That's what I would ask, and I'll explain why I'm asking that. Uh, if it has a run toe switch, then the controller is responsible for direction, all right? So it could be a controller issue. If it doesn't have a run toe switch, then you have a mechanical forward and reverse. So it could be something in there that's, that's not getting contact when you put it in forward. So the, the mechanical forward and reverse changes polarity to the motor to cause the motor to spin backwards or cause it to spin forward. The good news is your solenoid is still clicking. So it should be, that, that eliminates a whole lot of stuff. That eliminates you getting voltage to the solenoid. So you know it's in something to do with your forward and reverse switch or something could have gone out in the motor, you know, uh, but it's very unlikely that it's your controller. Let's see, Norman Lucky. What's going on, Norman Lucky? How are you? Thank you for joining in on the chat. When you go to lithium batteries, do you need to change controller? Uh, no, you, you don't need to change controller when you go to lithium. Uh, your controller should be fine. Now, lithium may make your controller work a little bit harder, but you're also losing a lot of weight off of your car. So it's kind of a wash there. Your controller may be able to work harder, but you've lost a lot of weight. So your power to weight ratio is better on your car. So that's going to help. So the only thing you need to make sure of when you go to lithium is you need to make sure that the charger that you're using is approved by the lithium company that you chose because uh, lithiums are very, very expensive, as we all know, and you don't want to do anything wrong where if in case a warranty issue came up that they wouldn't warranty it. 
in a, you know, in a perfect world, I'd change the controller on any car, whether I was going lithium or not. That was number seven. Number eight. Oh, we hadn't talked, uh, Hank. Well, then I'm glad then, because I, I didn't repeat myself to you. <laughs> but no, I've had that conversation before. It's either your needle in seat causing that backfire or your butterfly valve and your carburetor is not closing all the way. It's going to be one of those things because I've had the exact same thing happen to me in my shop. Number eight. I installed this disc brake on my 2000 club car to the letter of the installation mantle and the brakes are squealing every time I brake. I just replaced the pads and still squealing. I need to find out why. I'm hoping one of your experts can help. Well, I looked up the brake kit, and the brake kit you're talking about is the mechanical disc brake kit. It's the exact same brake kit. I actually have that system on two cars. I've got that system on my, on a, well, I was, I'm going to show my car up here in a little bit later. I've got that system on my uh, work car. I've got that system on my race car, actually, because it's, uh, it's, I wanted brakes on the rear. I didn't want anything on the front on the race car just because of speed stuff, so don't worry about that. But it's, it's a good system. I have experienced a little squeaking occasionally. I've never changed the pads uh, like you did, but what I would do would be I would try something like what we were talking about earlier uh, with the, the person in, uh, in, the, in one of the chats. Oh, it's, on a, it's Bob Wilson that was doing the brake job, and he talked about scuffing up the pads and the inside of the hubs. I would do the same thing. I would scuff up the pads, maybe even try to scuff up the, I'd leave the, leave the disc alone because the pads are going to clean those off as soon as you hit the brakes. So scuff the pads a little bit and see if that makes any difference. That's what I would do. But it's a good system. That brake system is a really good system, that mechanical disc system. Let's see, Greg, what's up, man? I'm still kicking back, surgery went well. Well, that's great, Greg. Thanks for the update. We appreciate you being here. Continued uh, improvement is wished for you by all, by everybody in here. I'm glad you're getting better. Number nine. I replaced the speed sensor about six months ago and my club car starts off real fast then slows down to 14. When I first changed it, it would go 20. Usually, usually a speed sensor it's more dramatic than that. It'll start off real fast and drop down to like six. You know, it's usually a, a more of a dramatic uh, change than what you're describing there. So the change you're describing could be a couple of things. It could be, uh, I'd want to, first of all, I'd want to eliminate the batteries. I mean, I, I'm assuming that your batteries are fine, but I would have to eliminate them and make sure that that's not what's causing your drop in speed. You know, as soon as you take off, you're putting a tremendous load on your batteries. You could have a battery that's failing, you know, and that's causing you the drop in speed. So I'd want to eliminate that first. Then I would want to, your, your car, let me see, what year was it? It's a speed sensor on a club car, but you don't tell me which year, but it does have a speed sensor. So if it's an IQ, uh, or if it's new enough to be a IQ system, then it would be new enough to have an M core. Uh, I have seen M cores cause drop in speed like that too. So th that's what I would want to know. I'd want to know if it's an IQ system. Greg Elliott says, thanks to all who may have lifted me up in prayer. Thank you, Greg, for saying that. I know back stuff is terrible. I hope you feel better. Keith from Nashville checking in. What's up, Keith? Is it hot where you're at? It's 90. Well, you remember when I said it was 96 and sunny earlier? Now at the bottom of my screen, it says 98 and sunny. So it's gone up two degrees since I first said that since I started the since I started the stream. <laughs> T 
10. Two thousand eight easy go. Batteries are good. Solenoid is good. When I press the accelerator pedal in forward or reverse, the motor makes a slight spinning noise for about three seconds and stops. Doesn't move. Hmm. Well, I I have this conversation a lot too. Uh, a golf cart, electric golf cart, is direct drive. In other words, the motor is mounted by a splined coupler onto a splined shaft, which is directly uh, connected to the gears in the rear end, which was directly connected to the tires and the axles and the hubs on an easy go or spline. So there's no, there's no slack. So there's no room for anything to spin. So if you hear something spinning, then something's broke. Something's broken. Uh, so if you key on in forward and you push the accelerator pedal and you hear something move and the car doesn't move, then something is slipping. Most likely on a 2008 Easy Go. If we're talking about a, uh, we're talking about a, a hub, uh, what is called, you possibly spun a brake hub because those brake hubs that go on your axle are splined, you know, so it's a common thing to spin a brake hub and now the spinning that you hear could be the axle twisting inside the brake hub and not moving. That's what I'd want to make sure is not happening first. Let's see, glad everything well to Greg. Thanks, Ricky. Rainy and 74, Keith, dang. You need to come get some of this heat over here. Get some of this heat out of Arkansas. <laughs> it is hot. Okay, that was the last scheduled questions. I'll run the social media links. You can follow us anywhere you would like. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Like and subscribe if you haven't already on YouTube or Facebook. Okay. We will run coupon. Use coupon code at go to golf cart garage and use coupon code. Which one is it? It's Tim13. Use coupon code Tim13 and that will get you 5% off anything you order from golfcartgarage.com. This expires on September the 1st, 2023. Tim13. I like hearing about how many times the coupon code gets used. They keep, you know, they keep track of all that, so it's pretty neat when I see when they share it with everybody. Don't forget about if you do want to purchase a hat, one of the Golf Cart Garage hats, you can do so. You can go straight to the website and order a hat now, or you can click the link in the description. It'll take you right straight to them. Take you right straight to the hats. That's the swag links down there in the description. All right. We don't have any let's see stuff today. We don't have any new uh, pictures. I, I didn't get any new pictures from anybody of carts. So send your pictures to me, you know, of your cart. Send me, send me pictures of either your cart or some type of fabrication that you've done for your cart, some kind of install. I don't know if it's solar panel or, I mean, I even featured uh, some trailer hitch work on uh, Quan and Quan's cart and on, uh, who is the other? Oh, Craig. It was Craig and featured some trailer hitch work off, off uh, Craig's cart. He did a fabricated RXV trailer hitch. That was cool. So I even enjoy that. I think everybody else enjoys those kind of things too. Uh, it gives you ideas on something else that you can do with a golf cart. There's thousands of things you can do with a golf cart and playing golf is way down on the list as far as I'm concerned. So today's cart is going to be no other than mine again because that's the only one that I have. And this is mine. This is mine. Uh, that I put together. I bought this from a customer uh, because the the kids, our grandkids, literally had caught it on fire. 
<laughs> it was a stock PDS and it was lifted and camo like this when I got it, but it was a stock PDS. You remember how I said PDS cars do not like to be lifted with taller tires? Well, this is just one of the times where that, that fact was just reiterated in my head when I was running my golf cart shop. This cart literally caught on fire and so it needed a new motor, needed a new controller, uh, needed a new uh, solenoid, uh, everything in that area. It, it, basically almost a new wiring harness. So I, I made them an offer to buy the cart because I don't, I said, you know, I told them I don't have to charge myself labor. If I fix it for you, it's going to cost this much. I, I don't have to charge myself labor and I'd like to have it. So I ended up buying it and going a whole new route. It's got a 500 amp all tracks controller. It's got a uh, big long torque motor it's called a long stack torque motor made for a pds uh, specifically designed for torque it's still a 36 volt system because i didn't need to, i didn't need speed i just needed to crawl around in the woods and uh maybe do something with a hog every now and then a feral hog and it was perfect for that uh, it's got a it's got a uh, it's got a stereo in it with four six by nines which you can't see across the front got an amplified subwoofer in the in the bag well right here obviously it's got a gun rack and a snake grabber you see what that is that's actually a snake grabber I got to the point now in life where I don't kill all snakes I, I actually I've been known to take them for a ride and release them you know away from my house but it, you know unless they're venomous you know venomous snakes that's a different story because I, I, I have dogs and they've cost uh, they cost us some money in the past with the emergency vet. So if it's a venomous snake in my yard, uh, I don't take them for a ride. But the other ones I have been known to relocate. I used, didn't used to always be that way, but I, things change when you, you start getting older, I guess. Anyway, that's the featured cart for the day because I don't have any pictures. So y'all send me some pictures of your carts. Send them to 00timfreeman at gmail.com. Let's see, Norman Lucky says, is it normal that the charger handle and charger port get hot? Uh, not if it's hot to the touch. Now it is normal to, for maybe to be warm, but not hot. If, you, if you're getting hot, then you've got some connection problem right there. Kenneth Butler, hey Tim, what's up Kenneth? Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget if you have uh, if you see any if you see any parts that that we don't carry at Golf Cart Garage, please post them in the comments. Or uh, I think there's a link in the description today where you can uh, you can email and your suggestions on things that we don't carry that you would like to see us carry. Or you can post them in the comments. Like I said, we'll we'll, we'll keep track since this is recorded. We'll see it either way. But there's a there's a a couple of links in the description that you can take a look at not just the hat links and the coupon links there's another link in there I believe today all right I think that's going to be about it this title of this episode today was brake squeal and we talked about uh scuffing the the pads up with with some with some heavy grit paper Greg said he's getting ready to lay down some paint on the Yamaha so we'll send pics soon cool Yep, we'd like to see that, man. Let your back get better first, though. You need to recover from that before you start painting something, I would think. You check on Facebook. Yep, we're still rolling good on Facebook. I got some backup internet now. You know, I've had so, we had so many internet issues lately that we decided to get a backup. I'm not using it today, but I, we actually recently discovered that uh, one of the members told me about this, uh, Travis Lee, I haven't seen him in a while, but he told me to check on this, and when I checked on it, it was not available. It was T-Mobile 5G uh, home internet. It wasn't available when I first checked on it, but just recently it became available. So I now have T-Mobile 5G, which I'll probably try to stream on it one day. I'm not on it right now, but I will try and stream on it because the numbers are looking pretty good. We're just doing a little testing with it right now. I'm always doing some type of testing on internet stuff. Uh, because of the double stream it takes you know takes quite a bit anyway that's gonna be about it y'all I am off tomorrow tomorrow's Friday 
And I will see everybody on Thursday, I mean Tuesday. I'll see everybody on Tuesday. Thank you for coming, thank you for showing up. I Please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you on Tuesday. Garage is now closed.